definitely digging the John J. Rambo jacket. <laughs> hey, do your first blood, not me. Hey, nothing over. Nothing is over. Nothing. You just don't turn it off. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Brian and Jack with Simple Man's Comics, where we are helping to amplify your comic book collection through integrity and community. If you're new here, we do a lot of comic and pop culture related content on this channel, so please consider subscribing. This is Three Up, Three Down, where we're going to cover three hot and three cold market trends in the comic community, starting right now with the Three Up, and we are talking Magnificent Miss Marvel. Talked about this on the Bolo show recently, especially with that last issue. We even talked about it on Last Call with that upcoming number 11 issue. But tell us more about this, Jack. Well, yeah, it's exactly what we've been talking about, Brian. Issue number 10 came out last week, has been red hot with Storm Ranger uh, as an entity first appearing. There's been a lot of debate whether or not issue number 5 or issue number 10 is the true first appearance. And it's one of those like market politics conversations. The reality is this is one of those situations where whether or not you're a Miss Marvel fan and you, you really are looking at this as like a long-term villain for her, or you're an investor, speculator, any of those types, the reality is that you want both. And that's really the key is both issues are moving. Both issues are seeing a lot of sales. And there's already a lot of eBay sales on pre-orders of issue number 11, the issue we just talked about in the last call show. So it seems like people are really on board for that issue. And if this series, and really Miss Marvel series in general, really haven't seen this kind of traction in the market. Miss um, Marvel's really only success has come in the form of high ratio variants or her first appearance. So this has been kind of cool, and we talk about this all the time on the channel. When you have characters like this, really the key to long-term success is world building. They need villains. They need allies. You have to build out the world around them. Right, like you mentioned, I think when this first character when this character first came out, there was some buzz and some hype around it. But now we're we're seeing it, and it's mostly from that reader buzz perspective. And there's some MCU ties to it. I'm full disclosure; we've talked about it. I'm not a Miss Marvel fan. I don't really read Miss Marvel, but we're seeing the buzz around it. All these hot ten lists that are floating around out there have Miss Marvel on it right now. So there's no denying whether I like it or not. Miss Marvel is up right now next for this week's three up portion we are talking spawn books we continue to talk spawn books it seems like every time another issue comes out there's some added buzz to it spawn is definitely hot right now todd mcfarland's hot especially with him doing that whole cgc signing right now a lot of people are sending some of those spawn books in to be signed but either way movie or no movie whether it's dead or not spawn is a hot character hot title and it's hot in comics all together yeah, Brian, this is one of those weird things where I can't put my finger on what exactly is causing the increase in demand in Spawn. Now, Spawn's always been popular. It's always been cult popular. And we've seen this kind of steady increase in popularity a lot over the last few years. But when you look at the back issue market, when you look at completed sales, you are seeing a little bit of everything. Those newsstand variants that perceived to be about 1 in 100 ratio. They are hot. They are moving. Doesn't matter the issue. Doesn't matter if it's a key or not. We're seeing those hard to find low print issues in the upper 100s keep setting records for sale prices. We're seeing those hard to find variants from all throughout the spawn run. Same situation. They're selling. They're setting records. We're seeing key issues that are relating to the current run. Things like medieval spawn or this like a spawn hell army and any sort of reference in the past to that. Um, all of it is, is on fire right now. And I can't tell, Brian, whether it's the CGC signing you mentioned, whether it's people still, you know, living on a prayer for this movie, whether it's, you know, the current run being kind of so reader buzz that we're getting new readers coming in and maybe they're going and filling out their back issue collection that they haven't, whether or not it's just really the influx and popularity um, of the comic book market in general. So many new collectors are coming onto the scene. And I think some of us OG collectors who maybe grew up with Spawn, we may take for granted because for us it's been easy to get those back issues for years and years and years that these new collectors, they're going back and they've got to start from scratch and they've got 300 and something issues to catch up on. Yeah, I definitely think it's a, a culmination of a bunch of little things, especially with it being, what, the longest-running independent title now when it broke that Guinness yep. Book of World Records, the McFarlane popularity, the Spawn popularity. 
um, there's Matina covers. Um, it's just all of it. And then, like you said, I think there's a big influx of either new readers or long-term comic collectors that never really into Spawn. And then there started being some buzz around it. People are going, hey, what's this buzz about? Going back and picking up some of these issues up. Or then you got the avid collectors that are like, yeah, great. You know, Spawn is hot again. I'm going to go and why did I stop collecting this? And then I go back and try to add to the run and some of those more sought-after Spawn titles. Yeah, and you know what warms my heart about it, Brian? It seems like the run collector is dead from the hobby. We don't see that very often, right? But it looks like it's very much alive and well when it comes to Spawn. Then the last one we're talking about for the three-up portion this week is online sales. Now, we're not talking about like eBay sellers. We're talking about all those online retailers, all those online comic book stores running those holiday sales, running those Black Friday sales. We talked about a lot of times on this show that those are great opportunities to pick up books for cheap and they're going on right now and yours can get incentive variants. You can get retailer exclusives. You can get all types of books for dirt cheap. Isn't that right, Jack? Absolutely, Brian. This is the most wonderful time of the year. And it's not just because it's Christmas season. It's not because we still have a full belly from Thanksgiving. It is because of these online sales. I absolutely love it. And it's funny how books that today are considered 50, 75 percent off type of books tomorrow will become the hot back issues. And you're going to wish you grabbed them when they were cheap. Now, I know money's tight during this time of year for almost everybody. But if you can find it in your budget this year or next year, plan for it for next year. To make sure that you are ready when these sales strike, you can really do well for yourself. And I'm talking about multiple types of comic buyer. If you are a reader, there may be so many books come out on a given week. Brian, you've talked about this, about the comic budget, right? The weekly comic budget. This is your opportunity to grab that book. Maybe you didn't read. Maybe maybe you looked at the X books and you read X Force and you read um, X Men, but you didn't buy Marauders. Well, now it's two dollars and fifty cents from you know, this, this online shop or that one, um, you know, maybe you think Marauders long term is going to be a book that you want to invest in. Well, now's your opportunity to do it at the price that the stores bought it at. There are so much of this. And those are not books you can immediately flip, but those are books you can buy and hold on to. Maybe you want those store exclusive variants. Well, stores have several of those from the past few years cut and gutted down to 75% off and things like that. Great opportunity for the collector to go get that cool artwork that maybe you liked, but you know, $15, you didn't want to spend the money, but for $5, you know, you're willing to do it. There's so many sales out there. You've really got to pay attention. And that's one reason, if I can make a little shameless plug here, Brian, 803-200-2720. Make sure you're in the Bolo Tech community because all season I've been throwing out alerts to different sales, whether it's a publisher whether it's an artist in their own personal shop, whether it's one of the big online retailers, I've been letting people know, as well as exclusive bolos in our Patreon group. Right, and also, even though they're having these sales right now during the holiday season, I'm not sure if they may or may not extend past Christmas. So if you get those gift cards for some of these retailers, hold on to them, check out those sales, or hold on to them even further because they're going to have further more sales like this throughout the year. And they make great gifts if you're looking to buy something for someone as well, those gift cards. And if you're looking for other ideas on what type of gifts to get that comic book lover in your life, we have a video on this channel that covers a whole bunch of great gift ideas, especially for this Christmas season. Put a card up here right now and a link to it in the description if that's something that you're interested in. But that wraps up our three up portion. Real quick, before we get into that three down portion, we want to highlight... One of the comments that we received last week on the 3 Up 3 Down video, and this one comes from Kevin Taylor. He says, my pick is all new different Avengers number one. This book came out the same month as Jane Foster Thor number one, so technically her first joint, first or second appearance in Marvel continuity. She also appeared on the back cover of all new, all, do, all, new, all different Marvel October previews as an Avenger first then. All new, all different Marvel November previews completing the second set. It has first appearance as Jane Foster Thor. Both books predate also November has the first appearance of Lauren Kenny as all new Wolverine. So thanks Kevin for that comment and make sure you guys comment on this video as well. Let us know what your hot, let us know what your three up three down picks are and we'll be sure to feature them on the next video. But with that being said, we are moving right now over to the three down portion and those are the picks that are kind of cold 
or on a little downward slope in the market right now. And the first one we're talking about is The Unsound. This book was kind of cool, but then it got option news and it kind of spiked up. So it was in the up portion, but now it's starting to trickle back down. Isn't that right, Jack? Yeah. And, you know, this book really highlights the cycle that we talk about on this channel a lot where these prices fluctuate, especially with these independent comics. And that's the reason why we want to talk about this, is this gives you an education on when you should be buying. You're right, this book was not talked about at all in the market, you know, going into the option news. It was honestly a book I wasn't even that aware of. It's a Cullen Bunn book. Um, I, I've read it since. It's actually extremely good. I can see why I got option. It's one of those books you guys will hammer me saying but you read it and you're immediately like oh this is a movie or a tv show and it's coming to netflix and if you watch this channel and you know how i feel about netflix properties i don't think there's anything more investable than something coming to netflix you get the biggest audience possible so what yeah michael with- bay movie hit netflix with ryan reynolds this friday right so when when this book got option what did we see well we saw the key collector alert we saw it skyrocket in eBay sales. We saw your favorite Instagram people posting about it. Brian, you posted it. I posted about it. Indie Spotlight Series posted about it. Um, we saw it all over social media. We saw it on all your favorite hot lists, all your favorite top lists. And the variant by the Comic Mint, which was limited to 500 was selling for as much as 40 to $50. A recent sale just went off for $5.50. It's not that this book is worth less or is less relevant than it was when it was selling for 50. It's just that people's attentions have moved on to something else. And that's how quick that attention span is in the secondary market. So when these books get optioned, the key is not to buy them. Make a note. Make a note. If you were late on the unsound, if you believe, you know what, this is a book I want in my collection. This is a book I want to read. This is a book I want to invest in. Whatever it is that you feel like is something that you really want to get in on that book, make a note of it. Wait. It only takes a matter of weeks. Brian, what was that? Like three weeks ago we were talking about that book? I mean, look how short that window is. Now, you'll still see some sales for $15 or so um, for cover A. Like you'll see these. It, the point is there's a fluctuation. You just have to be patient. And you will find the book that you are looking for. And I have no doubt when we start getting casting announcements and we start seeing this move closer to actually becoming a thing, these books will rise in value. And a prime example is last week on the down list, we talked about V-Wars. And already this week, we've seen a lot of V-Wars sales and price is creeping up. Why? Because the show is on Netflix and it's good. I watched the entire series over the weekend. It is really good, and it's true to the comic series. Not quite in order, but true to the series, and I think that's going to continue to rise. So you will see that happen with the unsound. So if it was a book that you were paying attention to and you thought those prices were ridiculous, now is the time to take a look at it. It's important also that we always reiterate, buy what you like, right? So it depends on what you're trying to do with this. If you're one of those people that if you're trying to think it's an investment or if you're trying to flip it and ride that market because this is is a market-related video – so if you're looking for that flip or want to buy it and sell it, it's on the downward trend, so it might be time to pick it up. But if you're looking to add it to your collection, read it digitally first. See if it's something that you want. Yeah. Honestly, this book isn't going to be any type of type of investment book. We can talk about Netflix. We can talk about whatever we want. We're talking about vampires, talking about V-Wars. What's the last time you saw 30 Days a Night <laughs> when that was popular? These are books like we always say, buy what you like. So make sure whatever you're doing, it's something that you want to have in your collection in case you'd want to buy it to flip it and you miss that wave and you can't. So that's why we always say, make sure it's something that you'll want in your collection in case you get left holding it. I think that's a great point, Brian, about digital comics. I think they're great for both readers and those investor types. It's great for the reader because they can read it and read it cheap. It's great for the investor because it's research. You can find out whether or not, hey, is this something you really believe in? Not enough people are doing that. Yeah, yeah because, I mean, it's, got, it's getting to the point now where how many modern comics kind of take off, right? It's kind of slim. Well, it's getting to the point the same way now with all these comics, these modern comics that are becoming TV shows, movies, all this other stuff. Everyone's mentioned this option news. Well, now there's not much that's separating them because there's a majority of them that are getting picked up. So you're not going to have those outliers. They might be great. They might be bad. And 
I could be totally wrong. It won't be the first time. It's just my personal opinion on how I collect and what I like to see. So if I don't like it, I don't want to read it. I don't want it in my collection. I'm not going to waste my time on it. But yep. yardage may vary. No, no, I think I think you're right. I think you're right. I think you've got to, the readers are the best investors. It always is that way. But with that being said, the next pick on the three down this week. This is another one kind of hurts your heart just being that 80s kid and that nostalgia. But we're talking about Ghostbusters. And this is weird because it's down even after we just had that trailer just hit. So it's anxious to see with that trailer hitting where this will be in a week or two. But right now, Ghostbusters is down. The trailer is what really inspired me, Brian, to look into this. So the trailer hit and I said to myself... I wonder if these books are selling. And what I did see was there were a few sales the day the trailer dropped of real Ghostbusters, number one, the first appearance of the Ghostbusters that we see in movies. Now, Ghostbusters, number one, came out in 1987, but it does not feature the Ghostbusters that we know and love from our, our you know childhood and these movies and the cartoons. Real Ghostbusters, number one, is the real first appearance of the, the Ghostbusters that we know. They appeared in that other comic series later, um, in a later issue, I believe issue 19 is when they first appeared. But there were some sales, there were some graded sales. But when I say some, Brian, I mean like three or four. And you know what you're not seeing? is these IDW books, the current series that have been going on, the current miniseries. You're not seeing these things sell. Even the crossovers, which are really the only ones selling almost at all. Um, the Ninja Turtles crossover, the Infestation crossover, the Transformers crossover. Those have, are selling, but they're selling with way below ratio for variants. The regular Ghostbusters series, those variants aren't moving. And you have to think, we talk on this channel a lot about these IDW. You know how I feel about them, these IDW variants. Let me tell you something. Ghostbusters variants are literally, the name is apropos because some of them are absolute ghosts. You just can't find them. They don't exist. Um, and there's some gorgeous ones, but the collector market has yet to pay attention to them. They've yet to, to the demand isn't there. If the demand gets there, the supply is so small that you can see massive price hikes, but it's just not there right now. And I thought maybe with this trailer, we'd see some spikes because I have a nice collection of Ghostbusters. And I thought to myself, well, maybe they're, they're hitting some value, but nope. It, you know, it, it's one of those things where the nostalgia for the property has not yet reached the comic book level and may never. But it will be interesting to see if this movie is successful, if it brings back the lore of the original Ghostbusters, if it reignites the fan base of guys our age, if it allows us to introduce this this product and, and property to our children, will it have an effect on the comic book market? I just don't know, but it'll be interesting to see. I'm anxious to see if the trailer boosts sales in Stranger Things comics. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so, yeah, we've had that. We've heard that comparison. I think the trailer, I mean, it was a teaser trailer, right, is what they call it. Yep. So I think you kind of get main plot of the movie. But we didn't see, you know, because it's supposed to have the original Ghostbuster cast in it, right? Rumored. Rumored. And I mean, you've got to feel like it has to. Yeah. The scene where she pulls the suits out of the closet, if that doesn't get you hype. To know what's got to be coming. Um, yeah, I know people were negative about the whole Stranger Things aspect, but I love Stranger Things. Yeah. So I, 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 I and you could that argue that like, Stranger oh. Things is a ripoff of Ghostbusters. I mean, it's. I think I see the comparison there because you're tying it back to an '80s franchise, right? right. So, be, and they're including kids or the grandkids or whatever in here. And I'm still the hyped kid on it. From Stranger Things. Right, and I'm excited about. I'm more excited about this than. What was the last Ghostbuster movies? I enjoyed the last Ghostbuster movie. Chris Hemsworth made that movie yeah. for me. But I'm excited this because it ties back to that original franchise. And you know me in 80s movies. Freaking love them. But either yeah. way, Ghostbusters are down right now. <laughs> no. So the last pick we're going to talk about this week for the three down portion is Killmonger. Michael B. Jordan, fantastic actor, played that character so well and... Killmonger was a character that definitely spiked when Black Panther came out. Black Panther's come and gone, so that attention span is come and gone. Now it might come back up. There's rumors that they could have Killmonger in the next Black Panther movie. I don't know how they'd do it, of course, if it'd be flashback or 
I don't know, resurrected. But either way, there's no doubt that spike from when that movie came has died back down. Now, is it down or they've just gone back down to where they were before? Well, I won't say they went down to where they were before, right? Because before the movie, Eric Killmonger was almost a non-entity in the comic yeah. book. I still love the Jungle Action comic, though. See, and if you have, don't have in your collection, Brian, now's the time. Yeah. Because I'll tell you, I, I am stunned. I have a, a brother, um, not Mark, who's often in the chat running, uh, moderating our chats, but um, I have another brother, Scott, who is a diehard Black Panther fan. Another brother, Daryl. I've, I've got three brothers. <laughs> um, but my brother, Scott, 80% of his collection is Black Panther. I mean, he is a diehard Black Panther fan. He's young. So he got into collecting comics through the MCU um, and Incredible Hulk, Black Panther, those are his two characters. And, you know, through him, I always talk about how Mark introduced me and got me paying attention to Power Rangers. I've always paid attention to the Black Panther kind of market. And it's really interesting to see what has happened with Jungle Action 6. This was a book that was $100 in mid-grade when that movie was out. That book in like low grade right now is selling for 10 to $15 and mid-grade is selling for like Thirty dollars in high grade is getting like seventy dollars. Raw Jungle Action Six isn't the only example. Eric Killmonger got his own solo series off after that movie. They even redesigned the character to look like Michael B. Jordan in that movie. And the variants, one in twenty-five incentives, are going for pennies on the dollar. Um, that series wasn't popular. It wasn't a big reader buzz. It kind of got panned. I bring it up because of what you said. Dr. Doom is speculated to be the main villain in the next movie. Um, and if you go by what the believed storyline and the references from Endgame, he's drilling underground, right? And that's why that issue with Kazar is real popular because we know that, that there's actually comic reference where he did that. And who knows what that could cause, right? What kind of – that could cause the resurrection of Killmonger. Um, it's a classic comic book trope of the villain – has to team up with the hero because there's a greater villain. So could Killmonger team up with T'Challa to fight Dr. Doom, this big bad that kind of reigns supreme? Um, and that's all speculation. You really don't know. All I'll say, if they bring him back, they better bring Ulysses Claw back with him because Andy Serkis played him freaking phenomenally as well. He really did. Don't hurt me. <laughs> no more. So there it is, guys. Those are our three up, three down for this week. Again, let us know in the comments, what is your three up? What is your three down? What do you agree with with our picks? What do you disagree with our picks? That's what this video is about. Let's have that conversation. We're all about community on this channel, as we say. So comment down below. Click that thumbs up button for us. And if you haven't done so already, click that subscribe button so you'll be notified when a future video is released.